Disability as part of diversity recognizes that access is more than ramps, curb cuts, and lower wash basins. It recognizes the diversity of disability culture and the importance of the language we use to describe disability. It validates historic injustices perpetrated on those who society previously viewed as takers, not givers, and makes us aware of societal bias that shapes our response to disability and inclusion. It is the movement away from those people to we people. I always say go out and look at any film, um, any book you've read, and see what's going on with disability. And they're always sort of surprised, at least initially in the course, that that's not that hard to do. Whenever I've taught disability issues, whether it's a small part in a graduate seminar or really you know, the class theme, all students identify somehow. Um, whether it's themselves or a sibling or a friend or um, especially in my graduate classes, maybe an aging parent. Uh, they do have ways to connect to it, even though at first a lot of them will be initially shocked that disability is everywhere once they started taking my class. Under the leadership of Dr. Vidali, University of Colorado Denver has implemented a high-level academic series on disability with noted guest speakers like Rosemary Garland Thompson from Emory University Sue Schweik of UC Berkeley, and author Anne Finger. I think my goal with the series is really to create um, a conversation about disability that relates to things like disability resources and service, but that also moves in a new direction. A dream for me would be to have a disability studies minor. Rosemary Garland Thompson, she's a professor in the Women's Studies Department at Emory University. And I chose her because I knew she was a dynamic speaker and also because her current work is on what she calls the cultural logic of euthanasia, um, particularly looking at the treatment of people with disabilities and the extermination of people with disabilities during and prior to the Holocaust era. I knew this was kind of a heavy first topic, um, but I wanted something interesting and more importantly, I wanted something that people could connect with. I knew that people were familiar with the Holocaust, that there's a lot of research going on around that area, but that people probably didn't realize that a lot of the techniques used in the Holocaust were first used um, involving people with disabilities. And I think that was something that really had an impact on the audience. Um, one sort of slide from her PowerPoint that stuck with me is this image of a, a man, a sort of Superman type, uh, with a piece of wood across his shoulders and he's balancing um, two, I guess you could say visibly disabled people. They kind of have this 1930s miscreant kind of look. Um, and it's talking about how, you know, able-bodied people are having to carry this weight of, of disability and really talking about how that movement um, to some degree started in America and then moved and became more of a Nazi concept. And um, we were talking about it in the audience, really thinking about how that's even featured in modern health debates. You know, how much are we going to cover people with pre-existing conditions or some of these other debates. And this idea that there might still be kind of a eugenic impulse uh, in modern times, I think, was somewhat shocking to some. Another part of the series will feature a presentation by Sue Schweik. Her work is on um, what's usually called the ugly laws. They weren't actually called the ugly laws, uh, but it was different prohibitions on having people with certain appearances in, in public. And I think that she'll get a conversation going about the relationship of disability and, and poverty. That's where I want to sort of shift the series to do something with arts and culture and say, you know, this is where disability studies can be transgressive and really interesting. In addition to the disability series, Dr. Vidali's Diversity Committee, with strong support from the Vice Chancellor for Diversity and Inclusion and Dr. Vidali's Dean, is also addressing some practical issues facing people with disabilities on the UC Denver campus. The committee is a little bit more focused on thinking about policy issues. Um, like right now, we're trying to look to see how the different colleges on our campus are asking faculty to address students with disabilities in their syllabi. We're actually just as a committee going to screen part of a um, it's sort of a documentary series all on one tape called GIMP Parade. It's pretty progressive um, but it pokes some fun at the idea of how disabilities treated in emergency plans um, in terms of the buddy system. 
Um, so just taking some time to kind of educate ourselves as a committee and then deciding what might make sense to screen from that and how we can start thinking about those changes. But we've all agreed that getting a student group together is probably the most important thing, which can be difficult um, on a more commuter campus, but we really just need more input and more feedback. Another thing the university committee is looking to address is student preparation. And I noticed that for students with disabilities um, who have bachelor's degrees, the uh, unemployment rate is 11 percent, where for that same group without disabilities, it's 4 percent. People are still shocked to see a person with a disability giving a high-level academic talk. The work of the UC Denver Diversity Committee shows that although there is much work to do to change perceptions, the most important step is to begin. Campus signage raises student and faculty awareness about disability. Accessible online and on-campus resources better support students with disabilities. Inclusionary emergency plans are an essential part of this initiative. And the wonderful lecture series on the history, culture, arts, and literature of disability will help transform attitudes from awareness to genuine acceptance. For more information on the UC Denver Disability as Diversity initiatives, check out the web, ucdenver.edu.